and hello everyone welcome back to another Pascal tutorial in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at arrays now if you have not seen my previous tutorial where I talked about loops I definitely recommend you do now let's get on with the actual tutorial so let's say we have a bunch of friends so friends now we have a bunch of them so we need to store that we have a bunch of friends so i have mark i have jack i have michael whoever now you could do like friend mark and then that can be a string and you also have friend friend mike and friend jack you can do this, but the more friends you have, the more effort it becomes to manage this. And this can be true for so many scenarios inside of programming where you have so much data that you can create a variable for each and every one. It's just going to be too much effort. Well, in that case, you can create an array. So an array that keeps all of your friends. So array one dot dot free. I'll explain this in a second of string now an array is a little container it's basically like a variable that keeps multiple values because now we have a variable that can keep one value but if you have an array you have a variable that can keep multiple values so three strings instead of just one string so now if we were to do something such as and i'll explain all of this in a second friends one becomes nick Copy this a few times, friend two, friend three, this can be Jack, and this can be Mike. And now if we were to write line friend at index one, two, and three, not 13, but three, if you run this, we get Nick, Jack, and Mike. So what exactly happened? Well, First of all, we specified we wanted to store an array with three items in it, with its indexes starting at one, going to three. And this can be more powerful, but that will be for a later tutorial. And it should keep a string data type in it. Then here we can access those indexes. So instead of giving them all a word to align them, for example, instead of saying Nick like this, we just say you have a number. This could be like their ID. Your ID is one. Jack, your ID is two. Mike, your ID is three. And we assign these values like this inside of the array. So then whenever we call array at ID one, we'll get Nick. This is called an index, but I'm just saying ID. So you can kind of think of it as like a dystopian future where nobody has names, they just have IDs linked to what could be their name. Something like that. Anyhow. And in here, friend with the ID of two, his name is Jack. So in a sense, it's like this. Nick, Jack, and Mike. And our indexes can go something like this. So this guy here, he's at index one. This guy here, he's at index two. And this guy here, He's at index three. So whenever we want to modify each of these, let's say we want to change from Mike to Nick. Cool. Right? Now, it will no longer be Mike, but Nickel. Because here, we said, okay, the value of ID three becomes this value. So we can overwrite things. So now, if we were to maybe do this, and then just paste that there. Now, if we were to run this, we'll see we get Nickel at the end because we can change it. So basically this value here corresponds to this name here now. Now generally, if you have an array, there's a chance you're going to have hundreds of values and not just three. In that case, printing out one by one by one kind of brings in another problem because what's the point if you were anyways going to have to set all of them manually and then call all of them manually? What's the point? Why don't we just use normal variables then? Well, there's one thing that can be very useful here. So four, that allows us to go through numbers. So if we say for one to the length of the friends array, 
then here we can access each and every element inside of this array. So now let's say right line friends at index i because i is a number and this will get the length of this array which in this case is free. So for one, two, three, right line and display the people in it. So now if this is even a hundred people, you'll easily be able to print them all out without having to worry about it. And my bad, I should just declare i, it's an integer. There we go. Run it. We get Nick, Jack, and Mike without needing to do them manually, like to print them out manually. And you can use the same method to assign values to them because this doesn't just need to be used for displaying. You can also assign with it. So if you, let's say, have the data of 100,000 users in your database, you get all of their usernames. So now you have 100,000 usernames. Then this is a way you can go for each and every username and do your thing. Now it should be taken note of that you cannot display an array. So right line. You cannot display friends like that. This is not allowed. So if we run this, you'll see we get an error because you can't read or write variables of this type because this array is of a special type which you can't just display. So you need to specify what in that array you want to display, as you can see. So you can't display the array itself. Now arrays can become more powerful. In fact, they can have multiple dimensions. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep into multiple dimensional arrays, but I am going to show you that they exist. So let's create our variable here, j, and here are friends. Let's say it is from one to three and one to five. And we can say of Boolean. And let's maybe go one to three, one to three. Now, here, we have an array that has multiple dimensions to it. So let's actually just turn this back into numbers of integers. Okay, that's going to be easier to explain. Now here, we can go for i becomes one, two, three, two. For j becomes, and you can use begin and ends here to make this easier to read. I'm just not doing that because I didn't see the need for it. Two, five. So we're saying for i becomes one to this three. And for j becomes one to this five. And they're inside of each other. So we can actually go begin and let's do a begin and end just to make things easier to read. So this is like this. Do and then we can go begin and end. And now let's assign each of these values a value. So friends at index i at index j, and I'll explain this in a second, becomes i times j. And let's create an R for loop, which we can use for demonstration purposes. And here we can write the line with friends. If we run this, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or not seven, maybe one, two, three, four, five, two, four, six, eight, ten, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. All right. Now the idea here is this array looks something like this. So the previous array we had, the friends array, we look something like this. One, two, three, right? This new array, this multidimensional array, looks like this. So it has three arrays inside of it like this. So that's this one to three here. That means it has three more arrays inside of it. And this here gives the size of these arrays. So one, two, three, four, five. This is how this dimensional array looks. So it's an array with three arrays inside of it. And each one of those arrays has five values inside of them. So when we do this for loop, we're saying Okay, so for index one, that will be this one. So this will be index one and then j1 to five, right? This is index two and then one to five. And this will be three, one, two, five. Now we can split this up to make it a little bit more simpler. Okay, like this. 
So now let's just move this up here and take a look at this top one. So this is the index one, one to five. This would be index one, one. Index one, two. So th this one here corresponds to this value here. This one here corresponds to this value here. And then if we take a look here, I becomes this first item here, and then J becomes the second item. And that's how you can assign to specific values inside of each of these arrays. Now, multi-dimensional arrays are somewhat difficult to explain. I do have a Delphi tutorial where I do cover them more in depth. So if you do want to learn more about multi-dimensional arrays, I actually recommend you go watch that tutorial instead. Because in this tutorial, I'm not going to cover everything so deeply. I mainly just want to show you that these things exist. So yeah, that is arrays as well as multidimensional arrays. If you're having trouble understanding multidimensional arrays, then it's perfectly fine. You don't need to be a great in it because once you need to use them, you'll learn by using them. And with arrays, they're fairly simple. They just a variable that can keep multiple data types or multiple values compared to a normal variable that can only store one value. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next Pascal tutorial.